I am here today to talk about an organization that is close to my heart um, and just give you a little bit in those 15 minutes uh, to know about why I started Tomorrow Smile. Um, why did, didn't she leave? I'm sure most of you hear that when domestic violence or any issue occur, especially when it affects women. Um, I used to say that as a nurse, as someone who dealt with women rights when a woman show up and uh, she said she was abused. Uh, my first initial thought is, why did you stay? Why don't you just leave? As simple, as easy uh, as that. Until I became a victim uh, myself uh, in 2004. Um, be, prior to that, uh, I was the speaker in Sudan. I grew up in Sudan. I was a woman right and a human right activist in a climate that doesn't look at women as a first uh, citizens, you know. Um, so I became an activist at the age of 13 and fought a corrupt regime. I was tortured, detained, uh, and so much that we don't have time to share. But that led to the UN helping me um, flee the country and became a refugee here in the United States in 2001. Um, upon arriving here, I start uh, working right away at a daycare, trying to navigate the culture and you know the language and all of that. And I went to Hack, where I got my first degree. Um, prior to Hack, I graduated as an electrical engineer, and then I found that this is not for me. So I went to Hack and became a nurse. Um, the first three years, trying to rebuild my life, uh, I start to feel I found a second home and a safe place, uh, and all my troubles are behind me. Um, 2004, it was the first time that my ex laid hand on me. And when we say laid hand, it is not uh, a slap, not like slap is an easy thing or a small thing, but um, I bled many times. Um, I was not able to get up and go to work or do anything uh, black and blue. Um, and not knowing how to navigate resources, it is still, it's, it's been over 20 years, but I still get choked up. But um, being in a new country, you're trying to rebuild yourself, and you find that you don't know any resources. You don't have anybody around you. I have a sister, had a sister in, in Philadelphia, and um, started to ask the question, what did I do? How can I make this stop? Um, that's all coming from being raised in a uh, society or a community or family that teach you that abuse is okay or just knowing that everything that happened is because you've done something uh, to deserve it. Um, this first time that I experienced domestic violence, I took my daughter, she was less than two years at that time, and went to the daycare where I was working, up on 2nd Street here. And the owner was very kind, and she let me spend the night there. Uh, after the kids left, we locked the doors and gave me a kid mat. I laid there, and I remember, I still remember that I was holding so tight to my daughter and not knowing if someone will open the door, um, not knowing where I am, you know, in comparison to, is it safe, it's not. That's just a couple years being here. Um, I slept, I didn't sleep. My daughter slept, but we slept on the mat, a children's mat that night. I had to stay because the next day was Friday and I needed that paycheck so I can decide what to do. Um, my sister luckily came from Philly, took me with her. When we stayed there the whole day, the next day my ex came uh, apologized and brought people with him who said this is the first time he was drunk um, you know give him another chance so listening to all of that in the back of your mind and not having support of someone to tell you you know you'll be okay I backed my staff took my daughter went back and as you can expect the abuse continued 
day and night, and you're in the back of your mind, what can I do? You try to change things. And knowing that abuse is caused because of you. That's what you hear. It's not something that you can, uh, you know, you blame the, the, the person who's causing the abuse. You blame yourself. You blame the victim. So I came back. Uh, abuse continue. We don't have time to go into details, but um, this, the only reason why I got out of that re relationship and I mustered some courage is I got pregnant and thought that when I get pregnant, this is going to stop. Uh, you think that you're going to have a family and he's going to realize that you're going to stop. You try. You try all of those things. I was eight months pregnant and he was on top of me at 6'2", 250 pounds and me. Um, eight months pregnant, he was on top of me, choking the life out of me, blood coming from everywhere. And I looked up, and my six years old back uh, that time was standing in the hallway. The look of the horror in her eyes, um, that was like a light bulb came in my head. And I, I just laid there, start to try to scream and say, your daughter is watching just hoping that he will stop. And he did, he looked, he saw her, he stopped, and that's the only reason I, I didn't die that night. And from that moment, I looked inside of myself and say that why I flew. I left my family, my friends, everything that I know to go through this. Is it that what I want my daughter and my unborn child to expect and think this is okay? So that moment, I called my sister, I called a couple of friends, and I told them I am not taking any stay. This is four years of nothing is going to change. Everything is going to stay, and I'm going to end up dead at one, uh, one of those times. So um, because of the society, again, don't call the police. Um, don't file anything. Just we will make them leave. So they took them. We changed the lock. I start filing for a divorce, um, but the harassment is still continue. Threats, phone calls, um, mainly victim think once they leave their abuser, the abuse will stop. But that's not the case for many uh, people. But then I was able to have friends that stood up and he finally left the state. Uh, and we were, we were safe after that. Um, that was a wake-up call, not just for me, but to know that there are so many uh, misconceptions. There is lack of resources, uh, not so many women. I didn't see anyone look like me, or just a woman, or a woman of color, or uh, just simply a woman who came out and talked about this. So I started to talk in 2008, and I heard it all. You airing your dirty laundry, uh, you cannot uh, make him, uh, you know, look like an evil person. Uh, don't talk about this. You're bringing shame to your family. You're bringing shame to the, the community. But I, despite, I start talking. And in 2013, I started Tomorrow Smile. Uh, before that, I start to volunteer at the Cumberland County and um, Perry County Domestic Violence. I start to volunteer with the YWCA and different other organizations. Uh, and then I started Tomorrow Smile because when I got out of this relationship, I start to get control over my life. And I start to go to school, earn my degree, uh, started my company, HSE Staffing, start to have a good job. And I was able to do and be there for my, my kids. So that made me regain some confidence and I wanted to be able to share this with anyone who's going through domestic violence or any kind of violence, um, that it is not easy. The road was never easy, but it's not impossible. That created the Tomorrow Smile, and then I start to share my story. This is just a brief, brief um, history about Tomorrow Smile. Um, Vlad is going to talk about what we do. Uh, but one thing that I wanted to point out is um, since 2008 uh, up to today, um, I've been consulting 
uh, working through Tomorrow Smile or several other organization. I it was funded by me. I never we never had a a, a board an official board until the Una <laughs> with leadership Ferrisberg, who's a good friend of mine. She sat me down and she said, "You can't be doing this alone. Um, I don't know how to ask for help, so I just get up and do it." Um, she step up, Vlad step up, and helped me rewrite um, the bylaws, brought members who are helping now, and we are out talking to people in a new way. It was a one-woman organization before, but now we have many amazing people that are part of the organization. Um, we help many women. Uh, I personally... I think the, the one thing that differentiates Tomorrow Smile from other organizations that we are not here to replace any organization. We collaborate, uh, we connect resources, and most organizations don't have the time to sit down with a victim and talk to them, or they might not have a similar understanding. So what I do is I sit down, talk to them, uh, give them advice, uh, not tell them what to do, but show them where they can get help if they need it. Uh, one in four women in the United States face domestic violence, and one in nine men um, face domestic violence. Um, the resources are available, but they're overworked, overwhelmed. Uh, many nights we had to call different states so we can find a place for a woman to go. And we personally paid for their tickets to go to the, a different state where there is a place for them and their kids. Um, tickets, bus tickets, uh, you name it. Anything that I could have done at that time, I tried to do. Um, this is just me, and I'm sorry that I give you too much, but Vlad, uh, you can take over and just talk about uh, what we do. <laughs> Good afternoon, uh, Vladimir Bofis. I'm, the, as, uh, as you mentioned, the chair of our board of Tomorrow Smile. And I had known Hajir, and I had gotten her book, and I read the book, and it was so compelling, sharing, her sharing her story with me. Of course, it'll bring tears to your eyes. Uh, but, you know, at that time, I was running uh, a nonprofit called Sound Community Solutions in the Harrisburg area. And actually, we were, in, we, we were uh, providing services in eight counties. And one of the services we provided was a batterer's curriculum. That's for men who went hands-on. And some women, but mostly men, that went hands-on. And when I found out that Hajia was working with the victims of many of these same men, you know, I, I, my heart went out to her. And... Uh, then I joined Leadership Harrisburg with everybody here I'm pretty sure knows of Una Martone. And Una is an amazing person, as you know, um, and she's running an awesome organization called Leadership Harrisburg, and I was there. And as uh, Hajir mentioned, she knew Una, and Una had told her, hey, we might be able to help. One of the things that Leadership Harrisburg does, the different classes each year, we go and try to get on boards of nonprofits that need assistance. And Tomorrow Smile was a perfect candidate because, as Hajir mentioned, she was a one-woman show. Hajir was coming out of her own pocket to help women, not just in Pennsylvania. I don't know how far and wide you, you went, but it was women in other states that would hear about her and her ability to help would call and say, hey, I just left this abuser. I need a place to stay tonight. I'm, I'm with my kids, my two little babies or whatever it was and uh, I need to get away from here. Can you help? She would send plane tickets, railroad tickets, uh, put them up in a hotel, whatever it took. She understood what was going on with that woman at that moment and realized that person needed help. She didn't ask a lot of questions. You need help, I'm here for you. So obviously when I, when I found out those things, because I knew of the YWCA and I knew of other organizations doing a lot of great work for in, the, in, the, in the area of domestic violence, but I never heard of anybody going that far. 
doing those little things, walking with that victim, making sure she had a bed that night and her kids had something to eat that night, um, making sure that she was away from her abuser. Because, you know, I was dealing with the men. I was dealing with the abusers in the Batterers curriculum. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a program called the Duluth Curriculum. It happens to be the number one Batterers program in the nation. The DOC wanted anybody that would get a contract to provide those services had to use that curriculum. And I was already familiar with that curriculum because I was using it with Dauphin County Victim Witness. And so, you know, it just it was a natural fit. And, you know, I really appreciated helping the guys because I understood it's, it's, a, it's a power thing. It's a control thing. It's also an anger thing. You know, we all get angry, but not everybody understands necessarily how to handle that anger, how to deal with the triggers that lead to seeing red. You know, once you see red, it's too, it's too late. And, you know, different people, and, and it's not, as, as Hajir said, one in nine men get abused in this country. It's one in four women. Every four women you see, there's one that's getting abused. It's a lot. It's way more than people realize. It's just not talked about. The media doesn't talk about it. It's kept quiet, even in families. We don't, oftentimes don't talk about it, and so we're not aware because it's not something that's up front and, and uh, you know, in our faces. But it's happening. It's happening so much, way too much. And so I, you know, it was a no-brainer for me because I happened to be in a class of 2022 at uh, Leadership Harrisburg when uh, Hajir came and gave her presentation and said she needed help. She wanted to get a board started. I'd already been on many boards, been a chair of many boards. I know Robert's rules. And uh, I said, yeah, I want to help. And so it, for me, it was a no-brainer. And she asked me to to be the chair of the board. <laughs> you can't say no to this lady. You just can't say, not only is she beautiful outside, but she's 10 times more beautiful inside. She's an amazing woman and just gives and gives. And as she said, you know, there are a lot of people that don't know how to say, I need help. She just does it. And if you want to come alongside and help, cool. If you don't, and don't worry about it. She's going to do it. She's got it. You know, and, and I'm trying to help her. Hey, you got to be able to ask. You know, my Bible says you have not because you ask not. And so you have to be willing to ask. And so we're working on that, and I think we're getting a little better. <laughs> but that's really where it's at. Tomorrow's Smile is all about helping, coming alongside victims and being there for them, providing the basic things that they can, so they can make it through today. And hopefully it is a brighter tomorrow. That's why the name, yes. Tomorrow Smile. Hard to say that. <laughs> we want you to smile, not only today, but for tomorrow. You know, because it's too much sadness. It's too much, you know, of the opposite of smile. And it's not good. It's not healthy. No one benefits. We love a win-win situation, you know. And we're, so while, while the Duluth curriculum and other programs are working on the guys, it's the, really the victims that need help because they've been traumatized. And oftentimes, as Hajir said, depending on the culture you might have come from, that's normal. Abuse is okay. I was telling somebody in here, I think it was Jim earlier, I was dating a young lady. She was a friend of my, uh, my sister's, and uh, she told me I was too nice. She left me for a guy, and about two months later, her arm was broken. That's yeah. what she was used to. She saw her mom getting beat up every day. That's all she knew. She thought that meant love. If, if, if the man doesn't love you, if he's not hurting you, that's what her dysfunctional mind thought because that's all she saw growing up. Yeah. You know, a lot of these things, guys, are caught, not taught. People see what's modeled in front of them. It becomes their norm. And then that's all they know. That's their reality, you know? And then we need to help those people that have that dysfunctional mindset that there is a better way.
there is another way and you can do better. So we want to we wanna reach out to the Colonial Park Rotary Club and uh, ask for your assistance. Well, there's our team. That's the, uh, the six of us that's on the board. Of course, you know this lovely lady here, and that's me. There will be more information on our website, uh, but mainly what we do is raising awareness. Um, trying to speak about a topic that is being silenced for a long time and anything, any way you can do it. You can talk to people around you and you can easily see the signs, but like, be proactive. Um, uh, it, it is, you can teach someone. A lot of people say it's, uh, you know, I can't teach someone in my family. They're being like this way this whole life. But talk to someone and if you recognize someone who is in need, for services, uh, you're not necessarily going to take their voice or control their decision. Uh, women leave and come back 14 times now, 14 times. They will leave an abuser and they will go back before they so, leave for good. See what she just said? When I went through human services classes at Shippensburg University, our professor, Ms. Burgess, told us that that time, and this was in 2011, 2012, that it was eight times that the average woman came back to her abuser. So obviously it's gotten worse. Yeah. That's the average is 14 times that a woman goes back to the guy who just smacked her, just gave her a black eye, just broke her tooth, cracked her head open. And so that's, you know, we're talking about real serious back, stuff. Here. When they go back, uh, they... Uh, feel ashamed and the people that help them feel like I wasted all this time trying to get you out and there you go back. So you're going to go back again. So don't give up on the person that you know. Uh, if that happened, uh, keep supporting them and they will leave on their own term. We want to leave some time for... Uh, anyone you know that you think might be in a, in a situation or whatever, send them to the website. They can, they'll take it from there, and they'll hopefully they'll contact us. And, and like Hajir said, sometimes you never know when that light bulb is going to go off and that aha moment happens, and, she, and that lady says, okay, you know what, that's it. That was the last straw. I'm done. I got to go. And now you need, she needs help, or even he. He may need help. So they can go to our website and, and start the process of getting help. Okay. And we will stop here. There is a lot. We can unpack all that in half an hour, but I hope you will read more about what we do, read more about what I was doing and I'm doing still and, and Vlad. And um, we're, so we're ready for any question. It's about education, it's about advocacy and support. Um, when, when I first started, it was all social media and word of mouth, people know. Uh, I have a large followers on Facebook, so I use that uh, to reach. Um, the website has been up since 2013, but mainly people reach out from working in the community or people know, read it on social media, or someone says, uh, my number, my cell phone number is up there, out there. Uh, people do call me and at any hours, and I do pick up. Now I start to turn it off around 12 because <laughs> I need to sleep. But no, truly, people do call at any hours. And a lot of people reach from Facebook, from my work. Um, you know, I've been, I've been in the community. I've done a lot of stuff. I run a staffing agency called HSE Staffing, uh, focused on health care, and I have the talk show, which has been there for a long time also. But um, I spoke in several um, organizations, colleges. I mentor at some high schools. So I'm in the community. Um, people do realize and know and reach out. Well, to your point, as we said earlier, it was a one-woman show for so <laughs> long. And that was the problem. 
Yeah. And so when she reached out to Una and Una said, you need help, and now we have a board. The board is not even a year old. We're just now formulating. We revised the bylaws. We've got all the fundamentals down. Yeah. We've just revised the website because it was just sitting there since 2013, not doing much. Mm -hmm. and now we're trying to get the word out. Soon you probably see a billboard. Mm -hmm. All of that stuff takes money. Yeah. And that's I, the key. And that's why we're now, we have a 501c3 and we can do some fundraising. And it can go to advertising and marketing to get Tomorrow Smile out there so that more and more people can get help and take advantage of it. But the main thing, I never focused on spending money, like my money on advertising, because I much rather use that to help one person. And as someone, just me, I can only help as many as I can. So I get a phone call, I go through the whole process with them. Like once they talk and until they're ready, if they're ready to leave, okay, if you're not ready to leave, we can talk about safety, about putting your paperwork, making sure your kids uh, passports or um, you know birth certificate, anything that they need, immunization, put it in a safe box just in case. Start to learn. Um, I started a uh, scholarship. If you look, HSE Second Chance. It's with Hack. Um, for the past three years, uh, we uh, I I because it was just me, but I pay fifteen thousand a year for a, a domestic violence survivor who wants to go to Hack. So the money goes directly to Hack, and they use it to give towards uh, a specific category. You can choose, and I chose to go towards a woman who, uh, um, you know, survived and wanted to thrive and wanted to get a, a, an education. Um, so the money normally um, is coming from my pocket. That's how it was from 2013, and I use that to the um, scholarship, also the book through Tragedy and Triumph. Uh, my book is uh, out there, 100% of the proceeding goes towards domestic violence. Uh, I have done a fundraiser with Hack, with Grand Canyon University, and another organization that I don't remember, but they had a whole month that going towards them. Uh, the sales from the book went to Hack, a foundation, and one month went to GCU. So just trying to use that to help people who survive to thrive. Um, so obviously you can see as a board, we've come alongside this amazing lady here and said, hey, listen, we have to now replicate what you do because you can't do it all by yourself. That, that model is not sustainable. So we need to get a model that's sustainable. We need staffing. We need to increase the, the, the footprint of Tomorrow's Smile. And that's what we're in the process of doing. And if any of you are willing to come alongside and Volunteer. assist, we yes. would love to have you. <laughs> yes. Any questions? Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say that it's not domestic abuse is not always physical, right? Yeah. That's right. That's right. Oh, yeah. Verbal and mental, emotional is sometimes the worst. And it can be. And it's very quick for people to judge you, think you're stupid, how yeah. you stay, like you mentioned earlier, yeah. Yeah. until that you're until that person goes through that journey, yeah. right, and knows that they have one foot in the box and mm -hmm. one foot out the box, yeah. they can't get out the box. Mm -hmm. And they get out the box and look back and they can see what they escaped, yeah. right? But it's very quick for people that don't understand that trauma bonding, what's going on. Yeah. And I give you kudos. Thank you. His wife with Shalom House did a lot of good stuff, yeah. and it's great to see organizations out there. Thank you. The Thank it you. It is out there, and people yeah. are quite unaware of it. That's yeah. true. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. And um, from 2013 until today, uh, we only lost two. Uh, not we were like a lot of them went back and, you know, people got better, but we lost two that lost their life. One of them was in Canada. So I do all 50 states, but I also I get phones from UK and, and Canada and the two one was in Finland, and it's all on, over the news, but um, she had the PFA, but she ended up dying in front of her kids. He stabbed her 92 times. And the one here in Canada uh, got shot in her head also, uh, and her 20-year-old daughter got shot because she was defending her. 
Um, she stayed two days in uh, ICU and she passed away as well. So, you know, they're, they're a good end to what we do, but they're also, you get to see the dark part. And it's, it's not an easy place, especially when you talk to someone that their story resemble yours. Um, many nights I, I just like, just cry and, and don't know what to do because you, you can only do so much. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, if we can uh, like spread the words and raise awareness and just be nice. <laughs> Bullying is a big thing and I can just say it like that. Like this is as simple as we can do it. Be nice and understand that even when someone acting a, a, a specific way, it is not because they're mean sometimes or, or they just, or oh yeah, this person woke up in the wrong side of the bed. They might ba be facing a battle that we don't know anything about, so. All too often abuse people abuse, abuse people. Abuse people, yeah. As Jim and I were talking about earlier, there's so much, we all know, there's so much evil out here. There's so much yeah. evil. And so we need good people to stand up and take their place on the proverbial wall and uh, do what we can to help. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Hajir uh, thank you very much for speaking uh, to us today. One of the things that we do for all of our speakers is we donate a book upon thank your honor you. uh, to the Dauphin County Library <laughs> thank System. You. So uh, this thank book, you. Uh, A Good Day for a Hat, Okay. A couple, uh, or a good day for an umbrella, uh, dodging some sparkles today, uh, is donated yeah. by Rotarian uh, Dan Bayer. So if uh, if you could uh, just make an inscription uh, here in the comments. Sure. Yeah, that, uh, Definitely. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And my cell is available. If you know anyone needs help, give them my number. <laughs> Thank you guys for having us.